That's part one. Yeah. <laughs> I like how like the collective, uh, it's like, yeah, that's done. We're done. Done. It's over. Like yeah. the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to be quite careful not to take my eye out, I think, on that one. It's a good sound. The, they're getting your eye taken out. That's, oh, yeah. that's a nice mm. sound. But then getting your eye taken out is not a good sound. <laughs> I mean, it might be, but it's perhaps not worth the... Uh... Yeah, probably not, <laughs> not the best. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some cool stuff in there. Like, with this sound world, there's like some interesting overlap in that like we both have kind of scritchy, textury, insecty kind of sounds afoot. But like the, I guess because your instrument is cohesively resonant, it's like a, a, a wetter version of that. Whereas like, at least with this, this setup here, it's like very like brittle dry kind of sound. So it's like, like a kind of interesting contrast of similar creatures speaking but one is like underwater and one is like you know in a, in a padded room or something like it's like a yeah this is like um it's an instrument so that like all the parts are linked mm. and like your sound world you can like there's no there's connections but they're different kinds of connections so it's not like um like it's not like the the resonations not like if you had bells attached to your drum yeah. it'd be different it would be <laughs> yeah, different yeah. i mean i guess i mean i think i know the answer but like how important was that cohesiveness to this specific instrument like to have the the springs all physically coupled to everything you know like they're all together and all resonating i mean that's the whole i guess that's the whole I, yeah, yeah, yeah the whole kind of <laughs> thing what would it be like um to have like lots of springs on one box mm. um, uh, yeah i couldn't really i mean yeah i mean that's just the way it is yeah um it's nice quite satisfying um and it yeah it just if you speak into it it just it will resonate mm -hmm. <laughs> quite freely have you used it in like a, as like a reamping thing? Like you know, some people like you, you know, like kind of send it into the piano or something like. No, actually, no, I haven't. Um, but I think it'd be quite cool. Yeah, yeah. It's but, like it's stereo, so like yeah. the stuff that's resonating on this side would definitely give out stronger on the hmm. right. Well, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I was playing yeah. with the uh, EQ a bit, so I can take the bass out. Hmm. Um. And, and that's across both channels, I guess. Like, it's just a, a yeah. Yeah, so, but mm. yeah, my capacity for designing circuits is pretty low, so it kind of works. Mm. But there's some weird interference, like, if I go to a certain setting, then there's just no volume at all. Okay. I have to be a little bit careful. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it felt, yeah, it was interesting having... Uh, like, because you've got your kind of, they're not bells, are they, but they're... Yeah, well, it's a bunch of, like, metal sound. It's a sample I've used for quite a few things at this point, but it's like, a, like I feel like uh, I've used it enough to kind of have it, it's just sort of in a, in a part of the language, you know? Yeah, it's part of your, like, thing. It's what I, I always know there's going to be those samples in. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, uh, I was afraid to say the word on camera, because I can't, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's mm. the, the CR word, isn't it? The... What's the instrument called? Oh, uh, Crotale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some in there, but I think, but this is, it's, it's that one sample library from like Metal Resonance. It like, it's the one that I had used for the Flucoma thing at the Kaizo Snare. It, it was just, when I first started working on that kind of stuff, it was just like a pre-baked large sample library. That was like, oh, some kind of interesting like spoons and forks and, you know, tire irons and like a lot of stuff that like, I, I'll go out and sample at some point, but like I just had a bunch of pre-baked ones. Yeah. And then I had another sample library in here, which I, I didn't use as much in the first bit. It might come up in the second one. But I, I find it contrasts really nicely with the the textural sounds and then like these kind of impulsy sounds, you know, where like uh, almost the filling in the, the, the role of that reverb acoustic or spring reverb is doing in yours, like where this is so dry, particularly close mic, that like those little bell sounds gives it the, you know, bing, 
kind of thing, which I think contrasts well with the, the sort of short gestural language. Which is, yeah, this is nice. I've got some other other sort of sample libraries I've been making on the go for that, but like it's like a core, like, let's get up and have a jam. It's like a, a nice, like, go-to one that I, I can just have loaded up. Um, hmm. Yeah. It's also cool that, like, the, the proximity here, because they're, they're both acoustic sources. Well, I mean, that's a sample library, but, like, in terms of, like, we're doing things with physical objects that are then amplified, but the physical objects in the proximity, like, I could kind of hear the things happening as well. Obviously, it, then it comes out and it's processed and there's a different thing to it, but there's like... Um, I haven't, didn't really use much processing, so... Mm. Um, there was a little thing where it was kind of... I'd left it on by accident. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm going to use it in the second bit. Yeah. <laughs> I just... I think I don't need it, but... Um, it's interesting if, if you think about an instrument as a sample library or a, mm. an instrument as a possibility for kind of... Uh, certain types of sounds so yeah. like i know um i mean there's infinitely more possible sounds because i can play them in lots of different ways i guess mm. um but i'm going to play it quite differently in the second mm. like section so it'd be quite interesting yeah to see whether like your whether your sounds are still yeah, yeah. still resonate in the same way with it I'm kind of curious now because it's it's something that I think about for for some instruments, but here because it's it's a it's a bespoke instrument, it's one that you've made, so you put each of these springs on it. Do you feel like in in any given performance, like in, in this first half, I don't think you did, but like, do you feel a, a necessity to play all of the sounds? Like, obviously, you can make a, a lot of sounds, but like the the whole surface, do you feel like oh, I've not used that bit? Let me. No, not really. Yeah, I think. Um... I think sometimes if you're n not feeling very focused or you don't let yourself, if you're not feeling like accepting what the thing is giving you, then you, the, it can be like, oh, I'm just going to keep going until I find something. Yeah. But actually, I mean, that's the thing about choice. It, that it, it's easy just to move on. Yeah. I think the what I like about a kind of restricted palette is that you have to work with it. Um, and find ways, usually through the playing. Yeah. Um, which I think's quite, you know, it's got parallels with like just instrumental playing, which I think is, you know, quite important with when it comes to making music that other people might might get a kind of vibe from as well as just you. Hmm. Um, I think that kind of phys being able to actually physically play the thing is super important for that. If you're, like, if you're playing live, I think if I were listening to you on CD, I think I'd immediately probably find it less engaging. Hmm. But when I see you playing live, I'm like, oh, what's that relationship between what yeah. he's doing to the sound that's coming out? Because it's obviously there, hmm. but it's also quite mysterious and interesting and kind of enchanted. Hmm. Um, which I, I think, yeah, I think it's nice. Yeah, I mean, with this kind of instrument, it would definitely be different um, purely listening because it, it is, uh, I mean, for one, it, it's a visually striking instrument and in, in the ways in you, with which you can engage with each of the, like, implements, but also the objects that resonate themselves is a, a kind of, like, and there's an aesthetic just to the, the nature of the instrument, which is, which is quite um, strong, which, uh, like, obviously, if you just have the recorded version of that, it, you lose some of that, but... I guess you gain some of that like sourcelessness, which can like the intrigue of that can also has some kind of mystery. Um, yeah, it depends on the nature of the sounds, I guess. Like like with this kind of stuff, I, I found that when I when I watch myself and when I just listen to it purely, I find both interesting, but in different ways. In that when I'm only listening, even knowing how I'm doing certain things, um, it can be very confusing. And like in a way that is interesting beyond myself not knowing, oh, how was it that I was doing that? Like there's obviously that, but there's like a, a, a kind of like, I don't know the nature of what I'm hearing right now kind of thing, which like when I'm visually looking, I, I can see the nature of, of what is happening, you know? So like, it's like, oh, okay, I'm doing this, but then there's this other thing happening, which is obviously some kind of process then. Um, when you remove the visual cue of that, it's like, 
it's almost like watching a video where the video is out of time and like what you're seeing doesn't make sense with what you're hearing. And that can, when, uh, if it's obviously just out of time, it just looks out of time. But like when it's out of time enough that like you're not sure, it's like, I don't even know what's happening in, in a way that's like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. As a kind of very unrelated question, has the surface of your instrument dried? Yeah, it's dry. I mean, it's kind of as dry as like this thing is ever going to get. It's <laughs> like an oil. It's like a weird kind of um, like marbling paint mm. stuff. It took, I think it, I think it kind of like, you know, that like oil paints and things never, yeah, yeah. never really, never really dry. It's kind of dry. I mean, I can touch it. It's dry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dry-ish. Um, yeah. But it's like quite cosmic. Hmm. Had, had it, had it visually changed much from when you put it down while it settled, I guess? Yeah, like it looks, it looked really good, and then and then there's um, like there's quite a lot of spread. I like it. It's um, it's quite weird, mm. um, and it's also like because there's lots of things stuck on. It's just visually very very unclear mm. <laughs> what's going on. Did you do the like the the paint on it first and then the drill and do everything like completely? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I built the. I actually built the wood because. Mm -hmm. So this wood is like um, leftover wood from mm -hmm. uh, when I was putting some shelves, making some shelves, and then think I, gl I like I would have put all the springs and things on it. Okay. Uh, and then there's like uh, there's little there's some preamps, some contact mics in there yeah. inside. Um, and then there's a bit of foam, magic foam on the bottom that stops it feeding back so much. Right, okay, yeah. I and guess it, otherwise it could just run away. Oh yeah, it's like, just, I've played it in like really big venues. Yeah. And it's, uh, the base can be a bit of a problem. But with the foam, it's just like packing from a 3D printer. Hmm. It just completely stops the base. Interesting. And it raises it up a little bit and it's like on a little plant. Oh, I see. Okay, literally that foam. I thought there was something else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's literally like... Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That stuff. I thought you had like like these little like squares like attached at certain points or something. Yeah. No, it's just like a massive... Yeah, of, it's just like... Massive bit of packaging. <laughs> and there's two arcade buttons here for no reason. They yeah, don't, They yeah. don't do anything. Not even wired to anything. No, nope. just No. Nope. It's just the aesthetic. I mean, they probably make a sound. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not a great sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a great sound, but they do make a sound. Yeah, yeah. It does have a pinball aesthetic, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, Rod. Yeah. Did you have any more? Did you have any more questions before we? Mm. No. That wasn't part of no, it. No, no. <laughs> That was just the that eye just, imperiling. Yeah, getting the eye thing.
Thank you. 